Hi friends, hope you guys are doing good and revising well for your INI exam. So in this video, we shall be discussing regarding your name trials in surgery. So what makes us uh, make uh, this video for you? There are two reasons for this. One, that you have some direct questions that have been asked from the trials being say which of the following is not the component of the given trial and second the most important one is that you might be given a clinical scenario where there might be components of this trials which would be a clue for you informing the diagnosis and solving the question subsequently so let's start with the first trial that we have which is your same trial now same trial components include your diverticulosis of colon then we have your gallstones and we have your hiatal hernia right the most important confusion that is often created over here is by given diverticulitis right so please remember it is diverticulosis of colon which is the component of your same stride and not the diverticulitis right so let's move on to the next stride which is your whipple stride so what are the components of your whipple stride it is symptoms of hypoglycemia right then we have your blood sugar level which is less than 45 milligram percent and the symptoms are relieved by glucose administration so where do we find this so the symptoms are relieved by glucose administration now if you're getting this classical triad it is a clinical clue to you that it is a case of insulinoma right so you might get a question that there is a 45 year old female who is presenting to you with symptoms of hypoglycemia and you find the blood sugar level of 45 mg person then you have the symptoms which are relieved by your glucose administration what will be your diagnosis right so over here we are discussing regarding your whipple stride so it is an insulinoma which is your pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor now the next uh, triad is your murphy stride so what are your components of your murphy stride so first is pain in your right iliac fossa right then we have your in temperature that is patient is having fever and then we have vomiting so what do you think with this clinical scenario you can think of yes it is a case of acute appendicitis so your murphy triad is seen in your acute appendicitis now the next triad which is your examiner's favorite have been asked multiple time and we cannot make a mistake in this which is your charcot stride now what is your charcot stride it is intermittent fever then we have intermittent pain and then we have your intermittent jaundice so the next question comes where is it seen is it it's seen in your ascending colon gyrus right now i'll just add an important point over here if with charcot stride you find hypotension and to that let's add altered mental status right this forms an another important question which is your renal's pentat right so apart from this 
there is one more important triad which I have not mentioned or uh, not drawn over here. So let's draw that uh, triangle which is your regular triad, right? So let us discuss regarding your regular triad. Now, what is this regular triad? Now, this regular triad is a component of new mobilia then it has your features of small bowel obstruction that is your dilated bowel loops and it has a radio opaque shadow in right lower quadrant of the abdomen so where do we find this regular triad now this is classically seen in your gallstone ileus so if we visualize what sort of questions can be found uh, formed from here a 55 year old lady presents to the uh, emergency with pneumobilia a radio x-ray was done where a radio opaque shadow is seen in the right lower quadrant and dilated bar loops are seen so what will be your management right so first you need to form the diagnosis so the diagnosis is gallstone ileus now the most common site is your terminal ileum right now please remember the treatment over here will be relieving the obstruction that is we are going to make an enterotomy and remove the stone please remember cholecystectomy is done at a later time it is usually not done in the same setting so as you can see this are the sort of questions that can be formed and framed from the triad right if you know the components of this triad it is going to be easy to form you the diagnosis which is going to take you to the next step now they might just ask you what is the most common site of the pathology right so this were a few important points regarding your charcoal triad pent renal's pentad and your regular triad now let's move on to the next triad which is your tillox triad now what is your tillox triad and where is it c so first let's know the components of your tillox triad so it is a uh, soft please remember that this all words are important they might just twist the words like soft hard cystic non cystic right so soft fluctuant swelling in the umbilical region right then what you have zone of resonance all around and we have the swelling is freely mobile in direction perpendicular to mesentery so if you get a clinical scenario with this features as hints it is telox triad and they are hinting you to the diagnosis of mesenteric right so now let's move on to the next this Cushing triad a triad where we cannot make a mistake seen in intracranial hypertension it has been asked repeatedly you will find this commonly in your head trauma questions so what are your components of your Cushing triad First, you have your increased blood pressure. Then we have your decreased pulse rate. And then we have your irregular respiration. 
right so please do not forget this stride as you find generally this in your head trauma patients and patients with your intracranial hypertension now moving down to the next stride we have your bochard stride now what is your this bochard stride so first let's know the components of this bochard stride so we have patient presenting with acute epigastric pain then another hint that you get that the patient is having violent vomiting and when an intern was trying to put the rice stove so it was inability to pass the orogastric or the nasogastric tube so when we are dealing with this features this is a classical example of bochard stride seen in your patients with gastric volvulus right so if you see you, the question that might come to you might seem to be a complicated one but if you take help of this few clinical clues you are going to make your life easier and form the diagnosis and answer the subsequent questions or form the diagnosis now the next one that we have is your macular tract so what are the components of your macular tract so we have vomiting chest pain and your subcutaneous emphysema so where is this macular triad seen so it is seen in your bore half syndrome right now there is another important triad which is associated with your esophageal rupture right even i had got confused with this now this is what we call as your anderson triad so if you look at the anderson triad the components of your anderson triads are actually different from your macular triad so first we definitely have subcutaneous emphysema right then we have your abdominal rigidity and we have your rapid respirations so this components are of your anderson triad and this is also seen in esophageal rupture right now moving on to the next triad is your sandblom triad so what are your components of your sandblom triad so the first component that we have is jaundice then we have pain and we have your melina right so where is this sandblom triad seen now this is classically seen in your hemobilia now the students often confuse the sandblom triad with another triad that is seen in your hemobilia which is known as your twinkies triad right so when this is seen in your hemo bilia now what are your components of your quinkies triad so basically it is again the same components itself right which is jaundice melena and your right upper quadrant pain right 
So unlike what we had discussed in your esophageal rupture where your macular triad and Anderson triad were different, over your Sandbloom and Quinky's triad are not different. So what you need to remember is that Sandbloom is another name of your Quinky's and essentially the components of both the triads are same. Right. So please do not get confused like in Macler and Anderson. So that was the main purpose to write separately over here so that it fits over here that yes Sandblom and Quinkies are same whereas Macler and Anderson have some different components. Now we have the last triad that we would be discussing which is your Gelesia triad. So what are the components of your Gelesia triad? So first we have your retro peritoneal fibrosis then we have your Peyronie's disease of penis and we have your Duptrine's contracture Right. So these are your components of your Gailey Z triad. So the question that usually f uh, is, can be formed from your Gailey Z uh, triad is which of the following is not the component of your Gailey Z triad. Right. So these were your few important triads which I had kept for the discussion for today. So please remember this triads, knowing this triads can help you get a clinical clue in your clinical based scenario questions which would help you to solve the questions faster and even correct. Right. So that's all from this video. Thank you.